Welcome once again. Right now we're at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 17, all the way through to the end of the chapter, verse 34, talking about the Lord's Supper. Paul says, But in giving you this command, I don't praise you, that you come together not for the better, but for the worse. Don't forget, Paul is not talking to everybody here. This is not a writing to the world, okay? This particular document that we're reading right now is Paul's mail, his letter. It's We're reading somebody else's mail. His letter to the believers in a city called Corinth. And those believers had, you know, they had their issues. For first of all, when you come together in the assembly, I hear that divisions exist among you. And I partly believe it. For there also must be factions among you that those who are approved may be revealed among you. Unlike many people today, Paul praises some kinds of division. He says basically it's good that there are factions, that there is some kind of division among you, that some people leave you, leave your fellowship because divisions just show distinction. And yes, I know sometimes division is not a good thing, but sometimes it is. Sometimes it shows distinction. We need to have division between light and darkness between the saints and the sinners, between the holy and the secular. For there must also be factions among you that those who are approved may be revealed among you. When therefore you assemble yourselves together, it is not the Lord's Supper that you eat. For in your eating, one takes his own supper first. One is hungry and another is drunken. What? Don't you have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise God's assembly and put them to shame who don't have enough? What shall I tell you? Shall I praise you? In this, I don't praise you. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in memory of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink in memory of me. I need to interject here, talking about the new covenant. The word new here is kainos, not naos. There is a difference between kainos and naos. Naos means brand new, never existed before. Wherein kainos may mean that, but it more or less means kind of like new to you, like or refreshed or refurbished, renewed. It's the same word that Jesus used when he said, look, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Well, is it a naos commandment or a kainos commandment? Is it a brand new commandment that was never given before? No, not at all. You know, to love one another, that was way, way back in the Torah. We read about it, how to love one another. But Jesus said, I give you a new commandment, meaning I'm refreshing this to you. I am bringing it out to you fresh. I'm refurbishing it to you. I'm polishing this commandment up for you and I'm presenting it to you afresh. In the same way, He's saying this about the covenant. This is the new covenant, not naos new, kainos new. Jesus takes the eternal word of God and he just basically makes it fresh to us. He gives us fresh revelation of it. For as often as you did eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks the Lord's cup in a way unworthy of the Lord will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. If you eat of the bread and drink of the cup in a very disrespectful manner, in a very unworthy manner, you are guilty of the blood of the Lord. You're basically joining those who killed Jesus. Very, very serious thing here. Now there's two spots for you to be in here. Two different places. Two different places for you to stand. Number one, to stand with Jesus. To say, I am crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives through me. I am dead. The old sinful lifestyle is 
dead and gone. And now I live a fresh life in holiness and righteousness. Jesus is living through me. The other way, which is doing it in a very unworthy manner. To treat the body and blood of the Lord in a very unworthy manner, it's like you're taking the position of those who actually killed him as opposed to actually taking the position on the cross yourself. He who eats and drinks in an unworthy way eats and drinks judgment to himself if he doesn't discern the Lord's body. For this cause, many among you are weak and sickly and not a few sleep. Paul is talking about here people who get weak sick and die because of this for if we discerned ourselves we wouldn't be judged if you judge yourself you won't be judged you got to judge yourself don't keep justifying yourself judge yourself be honest be humble put away the pride if we discerned or judged ourselves we wouldn't be judged but when we are judged we are punished by the lord that we may not be condemned with the world So it's a good thing to be judged by the Lord because the Lord doesn't want you to be condemned with the world. Therefore, my brothers, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. But if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, lest your coming together be for judgment. The rest I will set in order whenever I come. There's a lot here that Paul doesn't say. He said to the people in Corinth, I'll tell you when I get there. Well, we don't have the privilege of knowing exactly what Paul said when he got there. But I encourage you to press into God. Press into God. Seek God with all your heart. And if you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. I promise you. And there's another promise. If you call upon him, if you really, truly call upon the Lord in spirit and truth, he will answer you. And he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.